Hello and welcome to another episode of Reseller Information Network. We have done it. We've hit 72. I, I guess that's like full late retirement age, right? Mm -hmm. You can actually uh, at 72 is the top tier retirement. Um, we're not going anywhere. We're still here, <laughs> regardless uh, of what whatever else is going on in the reselling community. We're still here plugging away. And today we got some tips for you guys. You can take it or leave it from each and every one of us. But uh, we're going to be talking today about, hey, spring is springing. Not quite sprung yet, but it's, it is springing. Uh, I know here where I live, we have uh, three or four seasons in one week, and it changes from week to week. But uh, yard sales are on the horizon. Garage sales are coming soon. So we want to take a few minutes today and talk about garage sales, but not what we normally talk about. Normally, we're telling you, hey, pick this up if you're at the garage sale. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing a little bit about maybe some things to avoid if you're at the yard sales. Uh, we have some uh, some interesting takes, each and every one of us. So stick around for that. Before we get to that, though, we do want to recognize some folks that uh, had commented this past week on our on our video. The last one we did, if you haven't watched that, you can go back and watch. Talking about promoted listing, uh, dealing with eBay specifically on that, on the promoted listing. Uh, we see uh, some comments in here. Uh, Black Sheep Society said, I started doing dynamic ad rate with a cap, started around June-ish of last year. It made a huge difference. In a lot of ways, it feels like I'm I'm back to the days of list it and forget it. I have a couple of different tiers automatically set, some for lower priced items with a smaller percentage cap and some for higher priced items up to a certain price point if you're going to promote i think dynamic with a cap is a no-brainer that way you aren't automatically locked into a set rate i will tell you when i read this that's something i've not considered myself but it's definitely something to look at is that it, with doing those ad rates and setting them automatically you can actually tear off your items you could have a couple different campaigns going on at one time as long as they're not with the same item so that's actually a nice little tip there from Brad, Black Sheep Society. Um, Nova Scotia land, <laughs> Nova Scotian. Yeah. Okay. We'll stick with Nova Scotia. <laughs> but uh, it says, I have hundreds of new and used wrenches. Maybe I should join the one stop shop and be a tool guy there. Be the tool guy there, says Randy. Uh, Leroy's going to take that title. I'm just telling you, it's coming. It's coming. But Nova Scotia, you're welcome to come on over to One Stop Shop and be a, a tool guy, a part of the tool family. Uh, we, we will invite you right on in that tool shed. Come on in. So uh, we do thank, thank you for uh, being a part. Uh, Kat has a comment for Leroy specifically and says, Leroy, thank you for having them go back and walk you through it. They help so many of us. Please do not get frustrated by needing things to be explained and reviewed. So many of us do. Uh, Chris sometimes goes so fast we can't follow. We need to slow down a little bit. Yeah, we know Chris it goes fast. So not for all the rest of you guys. Uh, and honestly, when he's excited about something, he definitely speeds up. But always ask, hey, if you need no, no more information, it's no problem. And uh, Leroy, appreciate you last week for... Uh, Letting us walk through that with you. Oh, I, I can't, I can't lose out on this one. This one's uh, for Tim. Uh, Tim made a comment in the last uh, show about wearing the fishing jacket with no shirt to the yard sales uh, coming soon. So she said, uh, "Fishing jacket and no shirt, be still my heart." I think Tim has a fan over here. <laughs> All right, and that's a uh, trashy panda thrips. So. And as Cat Sue says, by far the best show to date, holding hands and making things work for the better of everyone. Uh, thank you, as Cat, for being here as well. Uh, and while we're thanking folks, we want to go ahead and jump into thanking our channel members. And I'll pull in Tim, let him get ready to rumble. Thank you to our channel members. Easy Cat Sue, simply shenanigan Shanna Diane. Matthews, our very own Blood, Sweat, and Cell, Trash Cat Rescue, New England, Eddie Boo, Joe B, 
Ooh, ooh, liquor, vintage, sport flips, charity's terrific find. Kathleen the Fern Ray Flipper, Ohio Pickers, Annette and Frank, rudely retro, absolute find. Dez Hardy, Heather Peddler, James Steinbreaker, Hold Paths, High Plains Flipper, Walter Tilton, Black Sheep Society, Death Pile Picker, Mark Rowland, Tracer J's Trading, Heron Vaughn, Central Iowa Picker, w -w 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 Wiggle Room 9, and Buck Mountain Bomb. Thank God, you guys, even every one of you, uh, for I'm supporting the channel. If you like that, a little lightheaded there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, if you want to see Tim pass out, just go in and join the membership. And if we get about maybe five or six more, I think he might go down at some point. And so, uh, <laughs> come on through on that. Uh, we do appreciate each and every one of you guys who support the channel. Um, it definitely helps keep things going. Uh, I, you know, we could say it, it keeps the lights on. You know, today, if you're enlisting, I feel Leroy's having a little blinking going on up there. So, you know, are you sitting <laughs> in the dark right now, Eric? I know, man, because I'm down to my little pink, my little pink ring light. That's all I'm working with right now. I've ordered one, but it's Amazon. I don't know. Maybe it was on the bridge. I don't know what's <laughs> happened. Too, too, too soon. I know. Too soon. <laughs> but, Hey, uh, so we do want to jump into our topic today, talking about what not to pick up at the garage sale. Uh, like, what are some things that that you guys would avoid, uh, both personally? We'll, we'll go through that one first. Okay, so personal. If we go around personally, what's something that you would avoid at, at a yard sale? My personal is my general too. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh, I, I guess I could go personal. Okay, we'll do personal. All right. So for me personally, right now, currently, now this can change at any given point in time. Remember, like, you know, like things change. But personally, I'm not picking up anything big anymore unless it's worth over $100. Listen, that might not be like, I don't know if I would pick up like a stereo receiver right now. It would have it would have to be like a hundred. If it was one dollar and I knew that it worked, I plugged it in at the yard sale and it sold for like 150 bucks, I might pick it up. So are we talking like, big as in weight or size? Size and weight. Just size, actually, because weight doesn't really bother me as long as it's just the size. Like I'm trying to avoid like having to ship large items because not necessarily because of the shipping. But because of the storage, I'm trying to like make my inventory as easily stored as possible. Um, I'm not picking up anything that's a long tail item unless it's small. You'll, you'll notice that there's everything has a like an attached thing to it. Yeah. Like small, easy to store, easy to ship, cheap to buy, expensive to sell. It doesn't fall in any of those categories. I'm not like picking it up at all like i don't want to buy i don't want to buy things that i have to spend twenty dollars on that will sell for fifty dollars that'll take six months to sell i want absolutely nothing to do with any of that like it just i i know that i know that like you know a lot of people will tell you that you know double your money you're never doubling your money as a reseller unless you're tripling your money i think that should be the rule of thumb right there like it's so easy to be like, oh, this is ten, this is twenty five dollars. It sells for fifty dollars. I'll double my money, because you're not doing all the math on the spot. Like you're just doing that initial, like, okay, it sells for fifty. I can buy it for twenty five. If you're not, you're not doubling your money as a reseller unless you're tripling your money. That should be automatic. Like you should think about that in your head. Um, and so for me, like that's kind of like personally what I'm not picking up. I'm not picking up project pieces anymore either if it's a project piece i mean sir knock and i kind of started that a little bit last mm -hmm. uh 100 mile yard sale 
Like, I'm not picking up project pieces. Like, it would have to be like a shark tooth hat or, a, or a, you know, like something like that. And even then, like, if the pro, like, I have to assess the project and the price once again. But, like, I'm not picking up project pieces, things that, like, need, like, extensive amount of cleaning and uh, rewiring or, you know, stuff like that. Th those are the things that I'm personally not picking up anymore. Um, I'm, I'm getting very picky when it comes to picking now. Uh, like, if, if it's, like, a piece of clothing and, like, it's got a big stain on it, I'm not picking it up anymore. Unless it's, like, a, like hundred dollar item i want nothing to do with it i want stuff that i can bring home photograph list and sell that's it like very quick very simple very easy i'm not making my work process harder i'm trying to make my work process easier i want stuff to come in and i want stuff to go out so like if i can't like there's certain things yeah that you know if it's a good little wash you know a dusting something like that yeah maybe but anything else, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not messing with it. And I, I feel like, you know, like you can get into detail about items and stuff like that. But I think, like, for the general portion of this segment and this show, I think that those are like my guidelines right now for me personally. So, not what is some personal that you wouldn't be picking up? <laughs> so, I see around here, I see a lot of what they call primitives. It's that like country decor, you know, farmhouse see, decor, farm cottage decor. decor. Mm. I'll tell you what, one out of five houses out here have that. Okay, and and they have it all over the place. It's it's sometimes it's like mm, that's interesting, but it's like man, that's gonna be tough to sell. So that, and then a lot of like, like um kids stuff too i avoid a lot of kids stuff kids toys and i and i know you've heard that when you see like if i if i see a bunch of pink <laughs> laid out <laughs> everywhere it, it, it's not a good sign it's it's not a good sign and i also have some also i have theories about like where i go too, you know in general too where i like to hit more of the i like to hit more of the out of the ways type places which you know sometimes it gets a little hairy in these neck of woods but little dicey a little dicey but but if you go to a new subdivision that, that like like i i saw them building two three years ago if you go into one of those places that are having a garage sale it's all new families you might catch some stuff here and there but you're not gonna you're not gonna catch the treasures you know you know so they, you're not gonna catch that that's been down in the basement for 45 years type of thing. You're going to, you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of the, the pink stuff, a lot of the, uh, the, a lot of the kids clothing, the kids toys, just the throwaway stuff. So, you know, even, even when it comes to like looking at stuff, I even look at location sometimes too, where it's like, all right, this, this has got to be a quick run to where it's like, Hey, we're leaving the car on while we're going to, you know, while we're going to get out because from from the road it, it, it's not looking promising so those are those are some of the things that I kind of in general just go past Leroy I know what you are picking up uh, like bags of chips soda whatever but let's find out what you're not <laughs> I'm not picking up the spoon I'm not yeah. picking up the spoon. um I've been I've been I've been Trying to figure this one out, I'm gonna switch it a little bit. I'm gonna say what I, what I, what I, what I, what I really haven't ever paid for. So like, like linen, I, I, I stay away from any kind of linen, um, unless it's like an uh, one of those old sewing, uh, sewn quilts or something like that. If I see one of those like for five dollars, maybe, um, and then um. I, like like Tim and those guys pretty hit it on the head. Like I just, for me, I'm so niche down that I got blinders on, and I just see one thing, and I know all the stuff, but I just I put my blinders on, especially when I'm picking piece. 
So picking piece for me is yard sale. I'm picking by the piece. If I go to an auction, I go to auctions often, and I got to buy the whole table lot, that's when I learn. That's when I'll get something that I have no idea about. I almost did last night at an auction. Um, and, uh, you know, you just you got to sell it because you got it for free. <laughs> um, but I just try to I just try to stay in that little blinder thing. Um, I feel like every time I buy something outside of my box, I give it away or throw it away and I and you paid for it. So like just stop doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like uh what I'm not picking up <laughs> sometimes is what you're not picking up is things you can't actually find anyway. Um, like I was thinking about it today. I was like, you know what I'm not picking up? I'm not picking up G1 Transformers because I've never seen one in the wild that, that was worth having. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not picking up uh, Diet Slice hat, Three Stripe hats. Like, I'm not picking those up because I never find one. Uh, I know that it's not kind of some, some general slice ones, but like, but on a, on a serious thing, when you th think about what I'm not picking up, um, I think along the lines of what Cernot was saying too, like a lot of newer items, um, Amazon situation, like, you know, if you see like all the letters on the side of the box in Chinese, like that's not worth competing with. Um, so things like, like, you know, it's funny when you pick for a little while and like, it's funny for me to go to flea markets, but also to neighborhood sales. Cause basically I can tell where people have got their stuff from like literally a mile away like this is dollar general clearance guy this is pallet guy this is a clean out guy you know like and, and all those guys have their own different nuance so for me i avoid the highly competitive items uh you're never gonna sell things cheaper with that that cheap made it made in china stuff that is all over amazon you're never going to be the you're not you're not going to win with that stuff i mean unless you're getting it for absolutely free um because that is a race to the bottom every time so for me i do tend to avoid those things now i will say i the only time i do pick it up is if i actually need something like that right <laughs> like okay i need a cheap whatever like i'm gonna i'm gonna pick that up at the garage sale but as far as for reselling uh, I do avoid those type of uh, items, uh, the new, like, cheaply stuff. And so for me, that would be the Amazon Dollar General. I avoid that that stuff. Yeah. Everything else pretty much is game uh, for me. Um, <clears throat> if, we, if we look at, though, in generalities, like, I know for me personally, we all have our own bent as to what we want to pick up, what we're looking for. Um, are there, there's some, like for me, there's some automatic like walkaways is that, uh, drive by garage sales. Like sometimes, uh, I do that. Let's just move real slow and look and see if there's anything. Right. It, and I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't know if you guys are this way, but sometimes for me, it's just a mood thing. Like sometimes if I go to a garage sale and there's nothing that I see right out of the, it, at some points for me, that's like a challenge accepted. I'm going to go out here and find something at this place. Like the other day, I actually found this little ball. Only thing at the garage sale. It's like 20, you know, but hey, two bucks, one of those things. But it, it, you know what that moment was? There was two garage sales out there, right? That's it. Two, I drove out there. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find something. So I know that's probably not good advice uh, if you're new but it does help you expand to the to a degree so in generality like if you roll up to a garage sale like what's the thing that would make you either a get out the car or b hit the gas like is there things that you just clue like look out scan the horizon uh we'll start with Leroy. personally you guys already know so if I see boxes, if I see tools, if I see, you know, for me, one of the biggest things, if I see a washer and dryer, always near the washer and dryer, I see tools. Like I just, it's just, I always see that. I don't know why. Um, but tools is, uh, it's a, it's a, like if I see a box, like a toolbox, or if I see like something hanging out of the box, like a part or something, I'm in it to win it. 
if I see, um, I hate to say it, it keeps coming to my head, and it's only because it, I hate to say this, but if I see like glass, I, I'm I'm a I'm a six foot two hundred and who knows how many pounds now, um, clumsy son of a gun, and I, I I'm afraid to walk. Not not that I hate it because I, I I mean I like Tim, I'm I'm afraid to walk by it. Cause I'm like a bull in a china closet. Eric knows. Eric's smiling. Like, and they they had the tables are so close. I'm just afraid to even walk by it. So, like at auctions, I won't even walk through that aisle. Like I'm good. So glass, I I, I stay away from only because I don't know nothing about it, and I'm afraid I'm gonna knock it over. And I've done it. I've done it at Goodwill. Trust me, more than once. Um, <laughs> I have. I've knocked glass down quite a few times at auctions, and I'm telling from experience. But any kind of box that looks like it has a part or something, I'm, I'm running for it. A toolbox, any kind of glass, I don't even go in that section because I'm afraid I'm going to knock it down. All right, sir. So, so you, I get excited when I see, like, this. And I'll tell you, this, 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 I, when you said that, I put the like the exact scenario in my head. You know, all right. So this is what it is. It's like two trees with a big old rope and a bunch of clothes hanging. And I can see a little bit of the old school camo. I can see a little bit of the blaze orange. When I see that, it, it's like. To me, it's just it's seeing that it's game time. Yeah. It's game time because I'm like, I already see vintage. I already see stuff that I, I I'm interested in. I can't wait to go see what else they have. That's what mm -hmm. gets me very very excited. Um, because here's the thing: you ain't gonna see hats from the road. You're not gonna see a lot of shoes from the shoes and boots from the road. But if you see, if I see those, those like the hanging in the trees. Man, I tell you what, I have found some of my best stuff at yeah at yard sales like that. Or I'll tell you this one: I like I said, I'm rolling out in the dirty. I'm rolling out in the dirty West Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Not not the new townhouses like you know the mom pop places out in the out in the sticks. I'll never forget. I rolled up. They had a whole fence line of black T-shirts just lined up. And I said, all right, let's go see what these are. Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson. I was just popping off the fence like, oh, hey, oh, but, but, no, hey, how much are, how much are the, how much are the, the shirts? Because I'm like, man, they're hanging them up. They're going to be maybe a little pricey because they're like a lot of Harley stuff. Oh, they're 25 cents a piece. All right, thanks. <laughs> you know, so, so places like that, you know, where you can like see clothes out in the open, they're hanging stuff. Now you do have to you do have to like kind of you know because there's sometimes there's a lot of women's clothes versus men's clothes so you kind of have to you know can't say hey y'all got any clothes you're like hey I'm looking for older men's clothing you know and then yeah. that gives them the, that gives them the kind of like the oh yeah 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 so yeah hey just a little sidebar thing like like for me just thinking about you rolling out to these things. So do you ever, uh, we, we joked about this uh, today when we were in, in about wearing overalls and stuff to garage sale. Have you ever thought like, I know for me, like a lot of times I will wear an older hat um, yes. just so that I can be like, Hey, like hats like this is kind of what I'm looking for. Like if you have anything, anything similar to that at all, have you ever thought like, Hey, if we're going out and we're looking for vintage clothing, let, let me, let me put on my older jacket. Let me put on my, <laughs> you know, flannel, like, now, you, it's hard to wear a jacket though because usually it's warm out here and yeah, so by the third stop you're already like i gotta take this jacket off but yeah, yeah i like yeah. to wear like an old hat you know, you know and just like a graphic t-shirt some shorts and you know and and yeah, and, yeah the hat is important because because when you say oh you got any you got any hats that could mean a lot of things you know oh yeah but when you if you show them an old trucker hat Oh, it instantly like yes or no, you know. See, yeah, you, yeah. you don't get that random like, oh, well, let me dig out all this other junk that you might be interested in. It's like, eh, nah, no. Yeah, yeah. Out comes the the flea market uh, hats. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is one of those things. That's just a little sidebar. So, Tim, is there things like, A, that is going to get your blood flow and you're pulling in, and what's the what's this other side of that coin? Like, if you see these, you're probably hitting the gas. Well, I, I'm also very similar to you where, like, sometimes it's, it's difficult for me because I I like challenge accepted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that, I'm very similar to what you were talking about where it's like, Obviously, I think that one of the biggest turnoffs for anybody who's at a yard sale is if you see the eBay printout, like the piece of paper that has an eBay listing that's like the highest dollar listing for that item, and you see that, you're instantly like turned off. Like I'd say 99% of the time when we see that, we leave immediately, right? I do. There is those one percent chance where you're like, yeah, you know, maybe they, maybe there's something that they couldn't find on eBay, right? Mm -hmm. In my mind, that's how I'm thinking. I'm like, maybe there's something that they couldn't find on eBay, and they just have it like in the dollar like table, right? So like for me, like that's an obvious turnoff. I think you know we discussed about you know the the sea of pink, which you know a lot of times is that's an instant, you know, some well. When we're on the like road, though, like you get out because like you're here, you're on the road, like you yeah. know this is what I'm here for. You get out and you do like a little breeze through, right? This is a hot take. I'd say seventy five percent of community yard sales suck. Um, it really depends on what your community yard sale is. If your community yard sale is in like a community of like townhouses, like Pleasantville. That's there's a good chance it's not going to be good. Like I would rather like what Cernok was saying too. Like I want my yard sale to be trashy. I want it to be stuff everywhere, all over the place. Like if I go, if I pull up and it's like tables and, and things are all nicely organized and stuff, I'm like, ah, you know, like I get everything got a price sticker on it. Like yeah, yeah. Well, I do like I do like my stuff to have price tags to a certain extent because I, then I kind of have an idea of what I'm dealing with. You know what I'm saying? But you'd never look at my flea market stand. You would never. You would keep walking. You see a bunch of bins. You see everything priced, and you'd be like, "Nope." And you could find a gem. I could have a fetting glass in the corner of one. Well, that would be bad with all those screwdrivers next to me. But that, and obviously, if I see like a lot of colored glass, like I, I, I stop, and you know what I'm saying. And I look if if I see a boxes, if like for me, one of the best things is like this is more flea market or tent town, tent city. If you're on the road, if I see banana boxes, I'm, I'm all I, mean, over. I love to see rows yeah. of banana boxes. Because yeah. that to me screams clean out guy. And yeah. like, I know that they're just trying to get rid of stuff and they don't really look at everything and stuff like that. So, but I think, you know, also like, if I see like an, uh, an ad, I think this is a little bit interesting too. If I see an ad and I see in the ad it says like video games, I know that there's no point in going to that yard sale first. Because there's going to be a line of folks waiting there at like five o'clock. Yeah. No early birds. Like, if, like if I see that, like I'm a little turned off too. Like, I just, I don't know. Like that sort of stuff gets me. Um, I, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of like turnoffs, like w stuff that like makes me just not want to go to the, that yard sale. Um, but at the same time, I, I mean, like I go to everything that I possibly can go to. So it's, it's, it's interesting. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, more so the turnoffs uh, we'll talk about when we talk about things that uh, we generally stay away from as far as advice goes for other resellers. For me, when, when we think about, like, reasons that would make you stop, reasons that would make you go, I, I think these guys t obviously touched on it. In the community sales, sometimes you'll see literally a single table with like 12 items on it. And yeah. you can you can literally see it off on the road. It's like, uh, keep driving, go and pass that. Now, that being said, here here's one of those things that I always tell people, always ask about stuff because you never know. Um, these guys know to a T because I actually had Tim on the phone 
Um, I went to a sale like that. And honestly, the only reason I even stopped there is because there's like a Ghostbuster replica car sitting beside that yard sale. And I really just wanted to get out and take a picture of that. I was like, well, while I'm here, I'll peek over there. And uh, the guy's like, he goes, hey, what are you looking for? Is there anything you're looking for? And I told him about hats. I told him about, you know, I said either sports hats or, you know, because I do ask certain things in the community sale that you might want to ask about is those kind of things. Like, look and see, do these guys have a favorite sports team? Maybe they have something old that, that, that they're willing to get rid of. Uh, this guy brought out that Rob Gronkowski Tampa Bay helmet. He's like, yeah. for 40 bucks. Like, and Tim's like, run, like, pay and run. <laughs> He's like, but when, when we think about those kind of things, like if you go to a sale for me, like where you're out there, you're not going to leave it. It's right there. Like literally pull up, ask a couple questions, roll on. Like, I mean, it, community sales, here's, here's my checklist that I kind of go through for me. I do ask about hats because you never know. I do ask about old t-shirts because you never know. Golf clubs. Ask about golf clubs, preferably ask, this may sound rude, by whatever, ask the wife about golf clubs. Yes. Because uh, I guarantee you there's a dusty cover sitting in, and if, if it's community yard sale, most of the time you can, dude, you can peek in the garage, like <laughs> you see that, hey, there's, there's a, you know, things like that, that may, may cause some, you know, you might run up on something, but. 99% of the time, if I go to that kind of yard sale, I'm doing a quick scan. I'm asking two or three questions and hitting the road. Like, moving on to the next one. Leroy's got some. I'll tell you um, one thing to look out for at those community yard sales is their own new houses, guys. And I've hit, and I've never talked about this, I've hit more than once. They change faucets. And there might be an expensive faucet. They can't bring it back because it was with the new install. Faucets, doorknobs, light fixtures. Look them up because That's some of those fixtures and some of those those faucets and stuff are big, big money. I'm telling you, they, they just they don't want to throw it away. It came with the house. Um, I've seen ring doorbell setups. I've seen, you know, you can just sell pieces. I've seen... I've seen like that stuff that they mm. change out because they didn't like it. Pay yeah. attention to that. It's usually on the ground. It's usually in a box. You're stupid if you don't. That's all I gotta say. You heard it here first. They were called you stupid. But... <laughs> no, it is one of those things. I was, I was actually as soon as you said that fixtures is a great thing for those kind of sales. Uh, I mean, for me, the other thing is, like I've, I've already said, Dollar General, that kind of stuff. If you see that from the road and you know everything's just cheap there, like, and guys, when I say that, I say it in the best sense of that word. When you pick it up, you can tell, like, this is not yeah. quality. This is stuff that's just, you know, the light, super lighter than what it should be, like, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Those are the things that I tend to avoid, especially now. This brings about a whole nother question, right? So when we go to big yard sales and we hit these tent cities, these, these places where it's a sprawl, now, now you're talking about something different, right? So like Tim kind of hit on it there briefly, is there's places to avoid and there's places to run to. And, and like, so just, just a brief, if you, if you hit a tent city, if you hit a community yard sale, uh, the tent city is going to be a little different. Like you're talking a blend of flea market, antique dealer, like clean out yard sale, this kind of stuff. So what are some things like if you could say, hey, don't waste your time? Because <laughs> that being said, I used to when I first started going to these big sales, I would avoid tent cities. I was like, don't even go there. Don't even worry about it. But we know because we've had success. Tim, what's some things that you... It, what's your plan of action if you hit a tent city? Like for me, that was always one of the weirdest things when we first started going to the long route yard sales where people were like, oh, don't go, avoid those. And I'm like, what? This looks like the best place in the world to me. Because for me, it's like a flea market. Yeah. And at a flea market, I love flea markets because you get a good mixture of stuff, like you said. Like you get clean out people, you get dealers, and you get yard sale people 
You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's just that's just you're gonna have that mixture of stuff, anyways. Even if you're going to regular yard sales, you're gonna have people who are trying to sell stuff for money that they're never going to get, and they don't really want to sell it, so they're just putting it out there because their wife or their husband told them they had to put it out there. You know what I'm saying? So, but when you're in the tent cities, you want to look for banana boxes. You want to look for you know not like it. Generally speaking, if a, if you go to a flea market or a tent city, the people that have the same item of everything at their booth is more than likely going to be priced out of your range for reselling. Like if you go to a booth and you see they have 500 pieces of cast iron, you already know yeah, yeah. That, that, that cast iron is going to be $100 a pan. You just know, right? You know, if you go up to a, a, a place and they have all the Pyrex displayed and it's like stacked nice and neatly, you already know that uh -huh. those are going to be fifty dollar bowls. A yeah. lot of times, these people are selling that stuff for even more expensive than you can buy it already, like on eBay. So, yeah. like that to me is is a general idea of a turnoff. Um, and you know, you take a peek because sometimes it might just be somebody is like, I'm selling my collection. It's got to go right. Like there is like a rare occasion of that. Um, so like, those are kind of turnoffs when you're, when you're in tent city, um, you know, obviously you're going to see the people that are selling like new items, like detergents and soaps and stuff like that. But you really want to look for is the mix match, you know, the stuff where like, they got like hats at one end of the table. They have a couple pieces of glass and they got some tools and then they got like some shirts and then there's like some kitchen stuff. Like that's like the gold mine for me yeah. because they just got a little bit of everything. They don't, they're just like selling it. There's no like rhyme or reason to it. Um, pricing versus not pricing. Sometimes I feel like um, it, it's beneficial when they don't have pricing but I think the first thing you want to do is the first thing that you find that you like, you ask what the price is. And then you ask the pile technique, which is something that we always talk about. You want to ask, like, if I make a pile, you know, and then there are more times than others that are going to be like, yeah, let's, we'll work out something ideal, you know, something like that. Uh, but, yeah, but sometimes you also, if you see price tags and stuff and the price tag looks like it's been on that item for, like, 10 years, uh, you're probably like going to not be able to strike a deal with this person because they're probably really firm on their pricing. Uh, so yeah, I, th I think that that's some of the stuff you want to keep an eye out and look out for as far as things that you will, that you want and things that you don't want when you're going into, uh, tent cities or flea markets in general. So right, you got anything to add yeah. about the tent city stuff? Yeah. Usually when I go there, uh, on, on those I, I find it's a little bit harder for me to find you know stuff because a lot of people already know what the cost is of this stuff they're, they're, they're already like oh yeah, yeah yeah this you know they can tell you everything about the piece I don't yeah. want that you know what I'm saying I want the I, I want you know so out of those out of those places you know out of all those places I only probably only hit up a few of them you know like really like all right, I'm a look, look because I can already tell. I don't, like, like he was saying, like when you got all the cast iron and all the Pyrex, I'm like, uh, you know what, uh, you know, like I want again. Stores and yard sales and flea markets like this. I want, I want the dirty. I want the, I want the, you know, you gotta dig for this stuff, and and it's like, you know, I don't, I don't want them. I don't, I don't want. This is what I don't like about a lot of those places. Say it's like you know, if it's slow and you're like the only one at your booth, any item you pick up and you're like looking at it, they're like, Oh, you know, that's a, so and so like, yeah, cool. Thanks. Glad you know what that is. You know, because if you know what it is and you know all that knowledge, then you know what the price you want for that. And that's not the price I want for that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder. Um, you know, I, again, I'm looking for more clothing boots, shoes those type of items when i'm out there because i can I, you know i always think maybe they don't know you know I, i'm looking for the people that don't know what they have that's what i want so yeah Leroy, you're next. 
<laughs> it's my turn. Um, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Um, I was gonna ask you guys a question. Um, I, I'm gonna tell you something, and then I ask you a question. That's that's stupid. That was a super opener. Um, but so out of we both shot, we both thrifted together. Who do you think? And I'm not saying it because I know. Who do you? Who would you say has the hardest time finding their niche? On these flea markets and stuff like that, or just yeah. in general, out of in well, out of us, out of just us, like finding the stuff you want to pick up. Their niche, yeah. Probably me, since I pick up. The I would say stuff. ten. Well, yeah. Well, see, I, I would say Tim or me, but Tim is. It, it's harder for Tim because the places he goes with all those glass. Like if they're bringing out of like the good glass, yeah, they know what it is. They already know what it is, you know what I'm saying? So that's where like I feel like Tim needs a little bit more, you know, has to do a little more negotiating, a little more like, hey, you know, this is you know, kind of and or even like educating them on the pieces. Cause I've I've been with Tim before and and the the person's been totally wrong about what the piece is. You know, I saw Tim buy some Pyrex out of out of a high, high antique mall <laughs> i guess because oh, yeah, we all walked through that one and we're like we're out and then tim comes out and, yeah they missed it on these two pyrex pieces like he's <laughs> like, i was like dude you you're the only person i've ever seen do that find that where there's there's enough meat on the bone because uh like i go in the places and i uh, me and sir not walked through and looked for sure I don't even, Leroy, I don't even know if you went inside. Maybe you did. I won't even go inside. I'm, I'm bad. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm yeah, bad. Yeah, that's, that's some of the stuff that. When I hit, I hit. When I don't hit, I'm, I'm cold. Yeah. Yeah. I feel for, like we were all kind of like that sometimes. Yeah. 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 For me, I'm going to, I don't know. I try to kick the door in, so like that's just usually <laughs> for me. I was like, if I'm having a dry spell, bro, like we're going, we're we're gonna find something, we're gonna dig up something. But there is sometimes like these guys, like one time they know I negotiated for a long time with this dude and got shut down. Like I I can get never get there. But uh, there there's a lot of those things for me. If people aren't willing to deal, that's that would be one of the things for me. Uh, unless their prices are fantastic and you're not de- willing to deal. And sometimes I'll just listen to folks like when you're walking, yeah. especially in the tent cities, like you can walk yeah. by, you can hear conversations and it's like, well, there's no point in talking to this guy um, yep. there because he's already shut down everybody who's come through. Like for me, sometimes I may go mess with him just for fun because I actually, I like to negotiate. And really for me, I like to win when I negotiate, but I also just like to, to do it like if, if someone says hey you can't get a deal out of this guy i'm gonna go i'm gonna take step up to the plate take a swing you know <laughs> like that's just who i am like not everybody's that way like some people are, are a little different when it comes to that the, like when a lot of people would give up on a negotiation i i'll hang in there just that extra little bit just to see what will come about but you know the other thing for me it, when in terms of things to avoid um, I know like these guys both talked about like those situations that uh um where everything is is identical and you kind of look at it and you know but but the little caveat with that is if everything's identical but then they got this one random thing sitting over here you can probably buy that random thing like and they'll yeah. probably let because like they they don't know about it or they they don't, uh, they, you know, sometimes you'll hear that stuff like, oh, this was my, gr- I'm selling this for my grandkid or, you know, my wife put this out here. I don't know what the, what it even is. Like there's those kind of things. And then also with tent cities, the one thing I will say is there's, there's some other things. Day one, if you're early, you can probably get a little better deal. The last day you can probably get a better deal. Uh, sometime in the middle, like if they've had good sales, they're not going to lower their price. But a lot of those guys have traveled there, and once they've got there, they've already spent a bunch of money. So, like, now they're like, okay, I need to recoup some of this. I need to work on it. But, and as we know, 
if it's raining, don't be discouraged because you can get some deals <laughs> in the rain at times. Like I, I got a bunch of stuff from that one guy that uh, we got the hats from that year because it is pouring. And he's like, hey, I, I'm going to close. Like, okay, well, let me make a pile real quick. <laughs> I can get to say. You guys have any uh, final thoughts? We're, we're right around time. Uh, I do thank each and every one of you guys for being here. Hey, look, drop in the comments. What's some things you avoid at yard sales? And then what's some things that maybe tips that you could share with other folks is, is what are some things that you do? Um, if you're if you're having a dry spell, like there's always a way to change it up. So what's some of your tactics? And if you have any questions for us, please put them in the comments. Leroy? Yeah, um, it was a good show. Um, I got to eat. Uh, Tim wasn't going to let me, guys, just so you guys all know this. So put it in the chat um, and tell Tim that is not right. He didn't want to feed his brother. I was like, I was, was like, we got a show going on, guys. Uh, we're gonna, we, we're gonna get this done. We're gonna get this done. And homeboy, I was like, Tim, I got it. Like, I, I, it wasn't even like the joking around, kidding thing. It was like, I'm hungry. And he's like, Yeah, because you guys all got to eat, and I didn't get to eat. So I yeah, wanted to house, I'm, in the I'm in the warehouse. I had to get in the van, go to Dollar General, and I still got food. Yeah. Okay. So, well, guys, I just wanted to let you know, you know, it's not just picking on me about other stuff. This guy and these guys pick on me constantly. So what was, <laughs> what? What was uh, me? You guys yeah. spent the whole day picking on me during listening to the oh, live Leroy. Poor Leroy, okay? Guys, this is it's not fair anymore. And I, I think I'm going into another show. So if anybody wants to go to a real resale show. <laughs> no, it was a great show, guys. Thank you. And we'll definitely see you guys next week. Yeah, we'll clip it out. Let Leroy's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> no, let the rumor. There'll be rumors all next week. Leroy's uh, leaving. Right. Um, hey, garage sale season's coming up. Here's the thing. Make a plan. Know where you're going. And but but if you're heading home on a Friday or, or you know you you're not doing anything on a Friday and you're driving home and you see a sign, hey, take a little detour. You know what I'm saying? Take a little detour because you never know. I went on Sunday. I was after baseball practice. I was dropping off my son. After baseball practice, I was driving home. I saw a sign. Went there. They didn't have much, but hey, took the chance. So take the chance. You never know where you come across. And uh, yeah. And and hey, if, if, you, if you've got garage sale season heating up and you've got the plan, let us know what your plan is down in the comments. You know, we want to hear them. Okay, listen. Most importantly, too. Because you're watching us on YouTube, you probably watch a whole lot of other Joe Schmoes on YouTube, right? Be careful when you're watching people on YouTube and they're telling you to buy things. A, check the date of the video, okay? You don't want to buy something that somebody told you to buy last year or six months ago. And then you go to the yard sale and then you buy it and you come home and it's not worth what they told you on the YouTube video six months ago. So always check the dates on the YouTube videos that you watch. Number two, do your own research too. Don't just buy it because somebody told you to buy it. Because there's a lot of people out here with scammer mentalities and they're just doing things for clicks, okay? We're telling you the real deal truth here, all right? So do your do a little bit of research too. Don't just buy it because somebody said it was a bolo, okay? So do keep an eye on the bolo. Yeah, be careful for those bolos, okay? But most importantly, please leave some comments below because we, today we learned during the listening and loafing that we're not only teaching, we're learning from you too. You know, there's always an opportunity for you guys to teach us stuff and we love it. We, we love to learn about new and exciting things that we didn't know about that we can go picking for in yard sales and things that you avoid. You know, tell us what you avoid, what you're not buying at yard sales this year. What's in, what's out? You know, what's the trending trend of trends? We want to know that from the viewers. And also, if you guys want us to talk about anything for a future episode like next week, please leave that in the comment section below. 
We appreciate all the love and all the support. But biggest of all, because I feel like you guys, you know, there's you have multiple friends. Just because you told one friend to tell a friend doesn't mean you can't tell all your friends to tell all of their friends to tell all of their friends about RIN, Resum Information Network. 